Hey there, NFL football fans. This is the lovely Rita Sanchez, a.k.a. your option football champ for the 2023 NFL season. I'm inviting you to join us for the 2024 option, where we pick the winning teams for each week's matchups and compete against each other to see whose picks reign supreme. Are you in? Head over to CBS Sports and search for the Option 2024 League or hit the link in the bio on the Fade Route socials and join today. It's for free. Pick a witty name, some winning teams, and I'll see you out there for week one. Coming at you from the AO Studios, it's the Fade Route with DNZ. Here are your hosts, D and Z. Powered by Riverside FM. Coming at you live from the AO studio. AO. It's the fade route with D and Z. I am D. And we've got a great show for you tonight. The Liberty split, split games one and two with the third game being played tonight. The lights seem too bright for the Guardians. And the Mets series is tied 1-1, heading back to Queens. But we begin today's show with a bunch of NFL trades. Mari Cooper is from the Cleveland Browns is headed to the Buffalo Bills. Devontae Adams of the Las Vegas Raiders is heading to the New York Jets. And this just in, Cam Akers, who has been playing for the Houston Texans, is heading to the Minnesota Vikings. So, Z, which trade do you like, which trade do you don't like, and which trade doesn't really matter? The Cam Akers trade is interesting because that tells you that something else is going on with Aaron Jones, right? They, they've been looking to replace Dalvin Cook and Alexander Madison. It, it didn't work. They brought in Aaron Jones when he became available after the Packers signed Josh Jacobs, and he's been looking good. He's looking good, but you do have to worry about Aaron Jones getting hurt. And he's already a little bit banged up. So you bring in Cam Akers, who also does not exactly have a clean medical history in this league. So if you can limit the injuries, if you can put him in a system where he can succeed, and that's Kevin O'Connell's offense, right? Kevin O'Connell's offense Mm. turns these guys into great players. So I like that a lot. So we're going to see what that happens. And it was it was a conditional pick. So they traded a conditional pick to get him. So it's really not that bad. Not that bad overall. Sixth rounder, eh, you know. Like, the Tom Brady's of the world are few and far between, right? The sixth round is your depth, guys. Like, that's what you really traded for Cam Akers, and hopefully you get a few good weeks out of him. I really like the Amari Cooper trade. Now, yeah, they had to give up a third rounder and a seventh, but they got Cooper and a sixth round pick. And we know that Amari Cooper is a good receiver. He's a solid receiver. Is he a superstar? No, no. And he doesn't have to be in that offense. He just has to be a better than average receiver. He's replacing Stefan Diggs. You can rebuild that in the aggregate. You still have Shakir. You still have Kincaid. You still have Knox. You bring in a competent guy like Cooper. You have Mac Hollins. You can get that production where you need it to be. James Cook is running the ball like the the Buffalo Bills look dangerous and they added a very good wide receiver to their mix. The no deal for me is Devontae Adams. Especially after what happened on Monday night. What the hell? Why are the Jets going all in? What 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 did you possibly see in that performance? Yes. Get me Devontae Adams. We're a wide receiver away. Was it the fact that Mike Williams again 
was the target of the game losing pick? Was it the fact that was it the fact that Garrett Wilson almost got destroyed when Aaron Rodgers threw threw into triple coverage and tried to get him killed? I mean, what what about last night? What about that performance against the Bills? Said yes, get me Devontae Adams. We are a wide receiver away. I, I don't understand. It makes absolutely no sense. And it's a conditional. It can become a second round pick if Devontae Adams hits certain incentives, certain performance uh, benchmarks this season. So this could become a very costly pick. This could become a very costly trade for the Jets that desperately need to clean house at this point. It's it's very telling. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of agree with you on everything you just said. Um, I think the Cam Akers thing is interesting. I'm pretty sure he wore out his welcome in Houston. He's got a bit of an attitude problem. He seems to have an issue wherever he goes. So I'm sure now that Joe Mixon's a little better, they're not splitting carries, he probably became a problem. And he's like, just get me out of here. Like, I'm not going to be this guy that's just going to play when Joe Mixon's hurt. And they're like, okay, no problem. Find a place for you. And like you said, Aaron Jones is a little banged up. Uh, their backup, uh, his name escapes me at the moment, but he probably can't really hold the whole load. I think it's Chandler or something. I, I think it's Ty uh, Chandler. I think you're right. Ty Chandler. I think yeah. you're right. He's he's not going to be able to get it done. So you bring in uh, Acres. Uh, Mark Cooper's interesting. You know, um, their offense is not overly complicated. Joe Brady's he's got a simple concept there. He's used to playing in the cold. He catches the ball pretty well. I think it'll be fine. Um, to me, he's not better than Diggs. He's not worse than Diggs. He's he's a suitable wide receiver, and that's what they need, right? They need a they need a guy that can get them. He's a good possession receiver. Yeah. He'll get your first downs. You've got to pay attention to him. You can't just you know you have to account for him on offense. So I think the I think the Bills got better with that. Z, the Jets thing, I just don't get it. <laughs> I don't fucking get it. Like, you don't... Like, they didn't lose yesterday's game because they didn't have Devontae Adams. They lost the game because they had 11 penalties. They missed two field goals. The quarterback threw an interception with, with the game in reach. They let a rookie running back run have over 150 total yards. What is Devontae going to bring to this? Is this just, we're all in? Is this you're trying to show that you're all in? Well, go get MVS too, for that matter, because he just got cut for the Bills. Let's just make this the New York Packers. Like, I, it didn't work in Green Bay. And if I remember, if I remember accurately, I'm pretty sure Devontae X out of Green Bay first, and then Aaron left, right? That's, if I recall correctly, that, is, that's right. Then he played a year with he played a year without Devontae, I think. I wanna I wanna say he played a year without Devontae in Green Bay. I'm just I think. You're no, you're you're right. So why why would you wanna come here? Why wouldn't Devontae wanna go to Buffalo? Why would you wanna come here? And Z, let me ask you this. I mean, how many more wins does this give the Jets this year? Because they got Devontae Adams. Like, what What can we chalk you guys up for? Two more wins? Every game they've lost this year, besides the first game, they've only lost by one score. And it's because of their incompetence that they've lost. I He still hasn't thrown for 300 yards. He came close last night. But I... Uh, I don't get it. And then to put it to put the cherry on top of it, Z, they really have a cupcake schedule coming up. Like it's going to be easy. They playing they're playing the Steelers this weekend, who seem to be making a quarterback change. So you might get Russ Wilson. Oh, Steelers aren't world beaters. Then you get the Patriots, Basora. Then you get the Texans, who you crushed last year without Rodgers. You get a Cardinals team that. I don't know what they're they just doing. lost Marvin Harrison. You get a you get a Colts team that hasn't been able to play with their starting quarterback. 
You play the Seahawks at home, who've shown they're beatable. You play the Dolphins, who I don't know what's going on with Tua. You play the Jaguars, are terrible. I guess maybe the next game of consequence is December 22nd when they play the Rams, who might be fully healthy at that point and playing for playing for something. So as bad as this team is coached and as bad as they are, they're still a playoff team without Devontae Adams. With him, you're still just a playoff team. That's what you are. So I don't get it. And you're right. You traded You traded a third-round pick. And it's a rental. He's only here for a year. And what's going to happen what are we doing? at the end of the season when Aaron Rodgers hangs him up? When? It's not an if. He looks washed, man. He looks... He looks washed. He's washed. So He's washed. What's going to happen? What, what's going to uh, freaking happen? You're right back at the drawing board. You have no quarterback. You Z, have no coach. Through si- yeah. So, Z, through six games last year, the Jets had scored 113 points. Guess how many points they've scored this year through six games with Aaron Rodgers? 113 points. 113 points. It's the same. <laughs> it's the same with or without him. You didn't change the name on the building. You didn't change the name on the uniform. You're still the New York Jets. You still are. You're still a mess. I don't. I don't. I don't get it. And and then if like, come on, Z. If you're Garrett Wilson, you're like, what the fuck, man? Like, what the fuck? Like, seriously, you're gonna bring this guy in here now? He's gonna steal my touches. Is Garrett Wilson even the two? I would argue Alan Lazard's the two. I would say Garrett Wilson's the three. Alan Lazard is the one, dude. He's the no, one. No, now. With, Alan with, Liz- with Adams. Alan, Alan Lazard is the one right now. He's the one, Christ man. almighty. So maybe you should just go get MVS and make this one big green and gold reunion. Like, maybe, maybe you should just do that. How about... Get Mason Crosby. I'm sure he could kick. Like, he's, what, 62 years old. But I'm sure he can fucking How kick. How about run the fucking football? Oh, God. I had an argument today with some Jets fans. Brees Hall ran. He what did we okay. Bring- what are we bringing in Devontae Adams for? How about we run the football? I don't care if the offensive lineman can't block. Run the football. This team is built to, I mean, this quarterback is at the, the time in his career where you need to establish the run to set up the pass. You can't just be dropping back 30, 35 times a game. He's not, he can't do it. He can't close. No. The quick. He can't close anymore. You know, it was interesting. I, I forget which show it was. I want to say it was Get Up. But they were comparing, like, Aaron Rodgers to, like, Tom Brady and Peyton Manning. They are like, you could just throw that all the way now. You could, you could throw that <laughs> all the way. Because Peyton went to the Broncos and threw 50 touchdowns. Made that offense elite. They went to the Super Bowl within two years. And they won it within three. Tom went to the Bucks one year and was like, yo, we're going to do this differently now. You know, we're going to win. And they won. The next year they were competitive. This is just... What are we doing? People still, people still don't know when they're the hot receiver. Mike Williams falls down, gets concussed on a play that the, the ball's thrown to him. What the hell's the matter with you? Catch the ball. What are you doing? An absolute nightmare. An absolute shit show. And even so, yeah. with an absolute shit show of 16 penalties, two missed kicks... This nonsense with Mike Williams, they only lost by three. Greg Zert, they lost. Greg Zerline hits two kicks. We're not talking about this today. We're not. We're not. And and if Greg Zerline makes the field goals, oh no, if 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 um if Aaron doesn't throw the pick in London, does Robert Sala still have a job? Like if this was the plan all along, then why did you fire Robert Sala? Like, I don't understand. Unless the only thing I can think, Z, is the only thing I can think is these are rash decisions being made by a general manager that's about to lose his job. Yeah. Right? Like, he's going to lose his job, and he's like, well, hell or high water, if this is my last year here, then I'm going it all in in this last year. And that mentality doesn't work. That doesn't work in the National Football League because – the move to get Devontae Adams today, getting Lazard, getting Aaron Rodgers, all this stuff, every time you're making a move, you're setting this team back a year. 
you're sending them back a year. Like, you don't understand, like, Brees Hall and Garrett Wilson, you're, they're on their rookie deals. Eventually, they're going to want to get paid. And then you're probably only going to be able to pay one of them. And then when you can't pay the other, you have to start over at that position. And at that same time, you're probably starting over at quarterback. The offensive line, who was full of oh. veterans, have no continuity. Yesterday, I don't know what Smith was doing at left tackle. He was basically just letting people run by him. And when they were when they were running by him, he was holding them. Like, what are you doing, dude? Do you know how to run block? Like, what are you what are you doing? And that's the funny thing. Like, there's they, no... they simplified the run blocking scheme. They simplified the offensive line scheme because reports came out that they had no idea what the fuck was going on. Oh, the shit's hilarious. It's all it's all hilarious. So you got wideouts who don't know what the fuck they're doing. You have the offensive line who doesn't know what the fuck they're doing. You have a kicker who can't make kicks, a quarterback who gets maybe a second and a half to two seconds to make a decision. That's a recipe for disaster, the, man. The, well, the problem also now is, is like, Aaron, it's like, listen, we got you Cobb. We got you Lazard. We we brought in, brought in, we're bringing Devontae Adams. We just fired the coach. There's no more excuses, bruh. Because you can't, there's, you can't put this on anybody else. You want Bakhtiari? You want you want MVS because as sooner or later there's no one else to pin. Go this get Jordy on. Nelson. Go get Donald Driver. Get them all. Go get them all. Yesterday, yesterday was a winnable game. Yeah. Team. London was. They were getting blown out in London, but they came back where they could have scored on that last drive and could have won that game. They didn't win it, <laughs> but could have, would have, should have all day. But you were in position. You're in position to win all these games, and yet you fire your coach. You go trade for Devontae Adams. Like, what's next? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do if you lose this weekend? Like, what are you gonna do? Well, I mean, what Aaron Rodgers pinned the pick on Mike Williams. That shows a lack of accountability. So, yeah, he ran the wrong route, but still, nobody knows that. So, as a as a leader of men, your job right. is to be accountable in that moment. You take him aside and say, "Why the fuck did you run that route?" But Aaron Rodgers doesn't do that. He doesn't operate that way. Aaron Rodgers doesn't do that. He looks for scapegoats. So uh, I'm I'm wondering. I, I'm with you. Who's next? Is he going to turn on Nathaniel Hackett? Nathaniel Hackett already got demoted. So you figure he got he got the okay for that, right? You figure you figure he gave them the okay to to do that. But who's next? Had to. Had to. No, but the Cooper trade, to. like. They didn't need him to win this division. <laughs> it's nice for them to be able to compete in the playoffs. This is a playoff move because as presently constituted, the, the Buffalo Bills are going to win this division pretty handily unless there's a miracle and Tua somehow comes back and leads like an Avengers endgame charge, you know, from the from third place all the way to first. But the way I see it is that they improve themselves drastically for the playoffs and they're better to they're they're more able to compete with the big boys when owning a home it's important to have heating and cooling professional available when things go wrong air care technicians is a veteran owned hvac company servicing the westchester area they are licensed to service repair maintenance and replace all hvac units if your unit is not running properly or you would like to improve the air quality in your home Contact Air Care Technicians for a free quote. They offer same day and emergency services for all of your needs. You can reach them at 914 315 1547. Air Care Technicians 914 315 1547. We were talking about playoffs. Let's segue into what we were going to start the show with. You know, once again, the Jets take up a monopoly of our oxygen to start our show. But we'll begin with postseason baseball, specifically the National League Championship Series. The New York Mets were straight up blowed out in Game 1 against the Dodgers 9-0, but managed to come back and take Game 2 7-3. Vientos had a grand slam, Lindor hit a home run, Diaz made it sweaty, but that's what Diaz does. As the series moves to New York... 
Which Met team do we expect to see in Game 3? The one that got blowed out or the gritty, gutty, competitive New York Metropolitans? I mean, I'm down on the Mets. Um, so I'm going to say I think I think they get blowed out in Game 3. Um, they have... You all uh, actually no. I'm taking that back. Dodgers are throwing Bueller. We're gonna get that gritty Met team. <laughs> Bueller's terrible. He's he's got a ten ERA. He can't get anybody out. No, he he hasn't been good. He has not been good at all. So, so yeah, I think you're gonna get that gritty Met team, and it's also gonna be a team that's gonna jump all over Bueller early. They're gonna score some runs late, and they're gonna take a two one lead in this series. Yes, Bueller has not been good. I agree. Bueller has not been good. But this Dodger team hunts fastballs. And Severino, he's got a fastball and he's got a splitter. He sometimes has a decent slider. A cutter here and there. But Luis Severino is primarily a fastball pitcher. That Mm -hmm. worries me for a team that has Otani and Betts and Freeman these guys hunt fastballs and they eat fastballs for breakfast. You gotta be able to mix it up. You gotta be able to have something else going on. That being said, the Mets have been here before. They've done it before. They've come through before. The Dodgers, this isn't the first time they've been punched. Last series against the Padres, Padres gave them what for? They just happened to outlast. And it just so happens that, you know, they got uh, they got you Darvish in game five and you Darvish can't close. That's yeah. kind of where you Darvish is in his career. But the Mets have a problem behind the plate. Alvarez ain't hitting. Defensively, mm-hmm. he's a high wire act because he's doing the one knee down. That doesn't give you good lateral movement. He's trying to steal strikes. The problem is balls in the dirt. He's gonna have to he's gonna have to keep picking like he's picking. So and we're gonna talk about that when we talk about the Guardians too. But the one knee down strategy is a dangerous game to play in the postseason, especially since they run at will on the Mets anyway. Teams realize the Mets can't hold runners on. So that's going to be an issue. How much longer is Nimmo going to be able to play left field? He seems like a liability out there. I think at some point they're going to have to make the switch. They're going to have to put Winker out there. I think Winker's going to have to be out there. Or Jeff McNeil, one of the two. Who seemed yeah, I didn't even yeah, I saw he was back. Yeah. I saw that I was that so, was interesting. I thought he was done though. Alvarez is an issue. Nimmo's foot is mm-hmm. an issue. Iglesias is chasing all over the place. He's still playing good defense. Uh, you got some you got some moves. Here's the thing. In the past the Mets would have no moves. Because they had a guy like Luis Giorme who couldn't hit his own weight. Great with the glove. No, I great think, with the glove. But... I think it was great. Yeah. I think it was great that the, the Mets fought back. In game yeah. two, right off the jump, Lindor led off the game with Completely. a home run. And then, then, you know, they walk Lindor and Viento sits a, a grand slam. Like, they've shown that they're not afraid of the Dodgers. They've gone toe-to-toe yeah. with them. You know, so I think that's a, you know, the Dodgers are the Dodgers. I mean, they've got stars. I mean, Freeman is playing hurt, and it's amazing that he's even able to go out there on his ankle. He's got to get, like, five hours of treatment before he can even walk around, which is nuts. Um, but Otani, obviously, Betts, amazing. Teoscar Hernandez is a monster. Like, they're they're stars. They're they're stars, and they're the some of the best players in Major League Baseball. And the Mets took it to them. Yeah. So in game two. Yeah. So there's no fear. There's no intimidation factor. The stars are going to go out there and do what the stars do. The Mets are going to go out there and compete for nine innings. And I just think that the Mets are going to come up on top. In game game three. three, the Mets absolutely have it. Game four, you're looking at Quintana for the Mets, who has been a stud. Like, he's been a revelation. So, if you can get up on the Dodgers, you can possibly create some distance here. Their pitching staff is so fucked, it's not even funny. Yeah, it's, they're, they're a mess. They're, they're bad. a goddamn they're, mess. Well, all their pitching is bad. It's not even just their they starters. They had to start it's Ryan Brazier. Believers. They had to start a bullpen game. Their closers. Terrible. There's the, but they, they do hit. I mean, they hit. 
this, but uh, yeah. So they uh, they're looking forward to Otani pitching next oh, year. Oh, completely. But in the American League. The Yankees trash the Guardians 5-2. Their Yankees are currently up 3-0 on them in Game <laughs> 2. The Yankees scored on two wild pitches, and then Sto- and Soto and Stanton hit bombs in Game 1. Today, the pop-up in the infield can't be caught. Runner scores. Another runner scores later on that inning. It just seems like the moment is too big for the Guardians. It's kind of hard to say otherwise, you know, yeah. like this team is built on this built, this team is built on pitching and for them to just completely unravel the way they did. Now Soto hit a bomb. Alex Cobb was terrible. Who's out for the rest. He's of the now year, out. He's way. down. He, he's, he has a lower back injury and he's, yeah, he, he's over. It's, it's over for him. So that definitely hampers some things. They replaced him with Ben Lively on the roster. So we'll see if anything comes of that. But ultimately, this is a very young team in Cleveland. Their biggest star is Jose Ramirez. Jose Ramirez is going to have to kind of put the team on his back and do what he does because he's a very good player. You're relying on the Naylor brothers. Solid. You know, Josh Naylor's got a lot of power. Bo Naylor's a pretty decent catcher. Also a victim of the one knee down fever. Like he could not get to any of those sliders in the dirt. It was just ping ponging off. And then the Yankees were able to just take advantage of that. But yeah, this is why you this is why you got Carlos Rodon. This is why you got Giancarlo Stanton. This is why you got Juan Soto to come up in these moments. And this is the culmination of the season. Now, Derek Jeter, it was very ballsy of him to say this, but he said, if you were, if you were the Yankees, you would want to pick and choose your opponents. You would pick the Guardians to to face them he he said you would also pick this route the yankees were able to pick who they were going to play yeah this is who they so and i don't necessarily know about that because the yankees have faced underdogs before and they have gotten bounced by underdogs mostly usually because they don't have enough pitching depth and once again the yankees are in a situation where they don't have enough pitching depth I'm looking at, you know, Garrett Cole is Garrett Cole. Like Rodon finally had a good start. Let's not anoint Carlos Rodon for doing what he should have done to begin with. Huh. Like, thank you. Congratulations. You know, that ball that Salvi Perez hit is still going. So yeah. there's that. Luis Heel. Luis Heel's had two weeks off, man. I don't know how that's going to play for him. Like, I don't know how he's going to deal with that. Like, you can throw all the simulated games. You can throw all the bullpens you want. There is nothing like live fire. There's nothing like live bullets. So, I don't know what Luis Hill's yeah, going to be I at just, the pen, uh, out of the in the rotation. I now. just, yeah, Z, I just don't think it matters. Like the, the Indian, the the Guardians are just an inferior team. They don't have anything to challenge the Yankees with. Um, I know they won the division. The Guardians certainly belong there. It's not like they're, you know, they don't belong. In the championship series, they definitely earned their way. But you're up against a juggernaut. Yeah, I would say that out of all the teams remaining, the Guardians are the probably the fourth best team. Right? I would say so. The the yeah. if you're going to rank them, probably. Well, it's hard to say, you know, because Dodgers, Mets, relatively even. Do- Dodgers and Mets relatively yeah. even. I would throw the Yankees in there. I would say they're all relatively even teams. So. Well, you know, the Cleveland is, you know, the Cleveland's even with them, though. No, but those three are. The other the other yeah. three are. Yeah. Which one of these things does not belong here, Guardians? Well, yeah, <laughs> yes, that's true. And they are a product of their division. They were wire-to-wire division winners. The Twins were no good. 
The Royals were decent. This team, this division got three teams in, mind you. And we're just not, in, it's yeah. not impressive. And two of them, and two are, of them gone. are gone already. So. so that tells you about the other guys in the wild card too. Because Seattle folded like a cheap tent. You had the Twins. You had the Red Sox. Like, the, these teams that, you know, didn't or couldn't close. So you have... You know, it's kind of a victim of their own success because then they had the second seed. But when were they tested? Nah, not, not that often. <laughs> not that often. Right. And I mean, the, I, I expect them to at least get a game. I don't. I don't foresee a sweep. Mm-hmm. I. That's just. They have some pride. Oh, the Yankees. Oh. The Yankees can be had. Okay. The Yankees are are not that great of a team either. So there, there, there really is no great team left. You know, we're not talking about the 2000, the 2000 Yankees. We're not talking about the 98 Yankees. We're not talking about like uh, the 86 Mets or a, some juggernaut team. We're not talking about that. We're talking about three mm-hmm. teams that are, that are good, but not great. And which is mind boggling considering the amount of star power and the amount of money thrown around by these three teams. That they're still just yeah. good. <laughs> they're just they're, they're just okay. They're just okay. Yeah. So we'll see what the the Guardians are going to bring to the table. Uh, at least Yankees in five. I'm going to call it Yankees in five. Oh, okay. All right. That's not, that's fair. Step outside of your safe area and make a statement without saying much with FCK Clout Lifestyle Apparel. Embrace the colorful chaos and stay emotionally regulated in their graphic tees, hoodies, snapbacks, accessories, and more. Go to fckclout.com today and check out current season and past season merchandise for men and women. Get it while you can. That's fckclout.com. Check them out today. fckclout.com Well, um, Z, there was a lot of uh, interesting things that happened in football over the weekend. So I'll pose this question to you. If you were setting up a circus, would you set up shop in Cleveland, Philadelphia, Jacksonville, or Dallas? All right. So do I want to set up my tent where the quarterback has regressed so badly that he has more sexual assault complaints against him than touchdowns Ooh. do Ooh. i want to do that or do i want to set up my tent in the big top where the coach shaved his head screamed at the home fans and then proceeded to bring his kid to the post-game press conference as some sort of human shield do i want to go <laughs> and set up my tent in a big top where my quarterback got paid but he is mediocre at best and co-author of a huge choke job last year. And they're playing for the right to enter the United States again. They're playing the Patriots. Winner gets to come back. England gets to keep the loser. Oof. Or Dallas. Like, or da- Dallas is already a fucking circus in, in two of itself. And, you know, the owner is not helping matters by threatening to fire the guys on the radio. Yeah. Does he even own the radio station? Like, this is news to me. It's kind of like when Ric Flair said he was the president of the United States when he was running WCW. So g- good for you, Jerry. WCW. WCW. I'm here for the NWO. But which is the clowniest of the clown shows? That's hard. That's really hard. I got to say, though... I had no expectations for Dallas. Philly's been a shit show, but I kind of, it's a little bit of schadenfreude with Philly. Like, you, you just kind of, yeah, it's just Nick Sirianni, just, just a punchable face. So yeah. for me, the biggest circus is Cleveland. Like, that's a winnable division. You had the number one defense last year. This was the guy, right? That they were the quarterback away three seasons ago when they cut Baker Mayfield. Mm. Oh, look, heard that look at you now. <laughs> look at you now. Look at Baker and yeah. look at you. 
So I got to say, I'm setting up my big top in Cleveland. But Jacksonville, you're not that far off. You're not that far off. I mean, man, it's bad out there. <laughs> um, the Cleveland thing is, like, I sent you a thing. I, we talked about this over the weekend. People are talking about Cleveland could be willing to trade Deshaun Watson and their number one pick just to get him off their books, just so they could start over. They're like, yo, we'll give you our number one pick if you could just take him and pay him. Because and then and then you just starting all over. I mean, Cleveland is about to go through like a really bad choice. Like, he is that bad. And the question I have is if he is so bad, why then aren't you just going with Jameis Winston? Like, what are we waiting right. for? And now it seems like it's a fire sale, right? You just you just traded Amari. Oh Cooper. my god, we're having a fire sale. So, what Nick and Ford's hurt? I think Nick Chubb is scheduled to come back. If you're Nick Chubb, do you even come back? You're like, listen, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna finish out the year on on rehab. I don't need to come back to this, right? <laughs> like, why are you gonna come back? Philadelphia, Nick Sirianni screaming at the fans is like, what are you doing, bro? What are you doing, Woody? Just focus on the game. And that was that was a bad game. They only won by four. They only beat Cleveland by four. It was 20 to 16. They have been a huge disappointment this year. Even though they brought in Saquon Barkley, that he was supposed to be the guy that was going to balance out the offense. They didn't balance shit. They balanced nothing. And then you have, and then you have Caleb Williams and the Bears beating Jacksonville in London, where Caleb had five touchdown passes and they called one back. And Jacksonville still could only score ten points. Travis Etienne got hurt in the third quarter. He's going to be doubtful in a hamstring injury. How does, how does Doug Peterson have to still have a job? And they and the owner saying this is the best team. This is the best team I've ever put together. And you're getting blown out by a rookie quarterback in London. That's bad, man. In Dallas, Dallas, you not only scored only nine points at home, mm-hmm. right? But you had a Lions team clowning you. They were trying to throw touchdowns to their offensive linemen. They were running hook and laterals in your building. I mean, that shit's going to bite Detroit in the ass, though. Like, karma is a bitch. So you, you keep clowning around. You keep playing with your food like that. Like, that's, that's going to bite you in the ass. And it did, to a degree. Like, how many Detroit players went down with injuries last week? Fucking around. Don't, don't fuck around. I mean, you got you got Mike Mike McCarthy calling plays and and uh, what is it Zimmerman is a Mike defensive Zimmer, coordinator. Yeah. It's Mike, Mike Zimmer is the defensive coordinator. It's like this isn't this isn't like the Minnesota Vikings and the Green Bay Packers ten years ago, man. Like, what hope is there for this team? There's no hope. How important are Micah what, Parsons and, DeMar- gonna- and Demarcus Lawrence then? Like, if, the, if you're missing those two guys and they hung 46 on you. I mean, coming into the season, like, what did you think was going to happen? You thought you thought Dak was going to throw for 5,000 yards. You thought C.D. Lamb was going to run for, you know, 2,000 yards and, a, what, and 10 touchdowns? And then what? Who was going to be the running back? Like, who are you counting on to step up? You thought Zeke was going to have a resurgence? Turpin. Like, oh, what was the plan? Yeah. Rico Dowdle. Like, that was the plan. That was, was the garbage. plan. The plan was Dowdle, Zeke, and Turpin. And I'm not, you know, the Tony Pollard is laughing right now. You know, he got his money. But, you know, th- there is no running game to speak of. You had multiple instances of contract bullshit with Dallas. Dallas is always overrated, overstated. As Michael Wilbon likes he's to say, paying people. he's paying people. He's paying people. He paid them. He paid. He paid. At some point, he he paid them. He paid CD. He paid. He paid Dak. He paid yeah. them. I don't know he's why he paid for them. This shit. He paid this them. is this is what this is your ROI. But there's also the idea that, which I don't know if it's possible, but it could be possible, is that he's at an age now where he cares more about money than he does about winning. I mean, he's making a ton of money owning the Dallas yeah. Cowboys, right? 
So yeah, he's he's not going to win the Super Bowl, but they are like the most profitable or the the most valued franchise in America. So did, how much at 82 years old, how much are you really losing? You got three Super Bowls and you're not getting another no, one. No, not even close. So now it's just all about making money. Your quarterback is he's a professional quarterback. You have one of the best wide receivers in the league. And that's it. This is who you are. So it, there's an idea that he just cares about his money about money, making money. And this is who he is. Dallas that's cash it. cows. That's pretty much it. Now, like if he really cared about winning, he would have fired himself as GM a long time ago. He would have brought in a competent football mind. Oh, wait, he did. And then what happened? He disagreed with them and got rid of them. Parcells, Jimmy Johnson, Barry Switzer. Anytime he brings in a competent football mind that could possibly get the credit, they're out on their ass. Anytime they're successful, it's because of somebody else. Jerry Jones just signs the checks. He needs to realize that his best role is not picking players. Your best role is signing the fucking check. As the owner, that's what you gotta do. Mm-hmm. Now, you have to, you, at, at his age, you need to be thinking about succession plan or selling. Right? Mm. How many, what, what the hell would they even value the Cowboys at if the Cowboys were to hit the market? That would be insane. Like, yeah. he would never even have to think about money again. He, he doesn't already. He wouldn't even need to think about it for generations. So... If it, if it is all about winning and proving you're the smartest guy in the room, part of the part of being the smartest guy in the room, Jerry, is knowing when you don't know it all. And Jimmy Johnson proved that, and you fired him. Bill Parcells proved that, and you fired him. So, there's that. It's it's not even that big of a clown show anymore because it's been going on since 1995. Like it's just the longest running. It's like Ringling Brothers. It's just it's on forever. Doesn't mean it's the best. In terms of dumpster hmm. dumpster fires, you know the dumpster fires are way more entertaining from a Schadenfreude standpoint. And I don't even know if Philly's that bad because you know Philly's probably still going to win the division. Like I, I don't know if Washington is that good. They're good, but I don't know if they're hmm. that good. I mean, they got it. You know, they got taken care of by the Ravens. Who are a better football team. They proved it. So they can be had. The Eagles are just kind of treading water. And uh, you know. If he, if he keeps having outbursts like this. He might be out of a job. Sooner rather than later. But. Wow. You know who we're not talking about though. We're talking about Cleveland and Philly. And Jacksonville and Dallas. We're not talking about any teams in the NFC North. That division is studded man. All the teams are a minimum of two games above 500. Odds are at least one of them won't make the playoffs. How do you think the rest of the season plays out? Who's in? Who's out? E. All right. So, unfortunately, the Lions lost Aiden Hutchinson yeah, gruesome. over the weekend to a really bad leg injury. And he probably won't be back until the middle of next year. Um, I mean, I think Minnesota plays stellar defense, and I think that's going to continue. And I believe in Sam Darnold. They're getting Cam Akers. They have probably one of the best wide receivers in the NFL. So I'm sticking with Minnesota to get in. And then my second team to get in is I'm going to pick Green Bay. I think Green Bay and Jordan Love, coming back from the injury, and he's playing really well. They have a lot of offensive weapons. You can tell that GM knows what he's doing, even though the New York media likes to say he didn't know what he was doing. He got rid of Aaron Rodgers because they seemed ready to be po- poised in position for the next 10 years with Jordan Love. Look at you now. So I'm going to go with Minnesota and Green Bay making the playoffs, Chicago and the Lions missing out. So we're in the situation, uh, we're in the time where we have seven playoff teams coming in. So you figure 
only one is coming at NFC East, you figure? I would I would say so. Maybe two. Maybe two if Washington's able to hold on. The AFC the NFC West is a fucking train wreck right now. You know? Who are you two who are you two in the NFC East? Po- possibly Philly and Washington. Possibly. Oh, okay. Possibly. Right. Yeah. It's possible. You're looking at two in the West, most likely. Currently. Probably San Francisco and the Rams. Right? So that leaves you with Seattle and then three other teams in the in the the north. So and and you also you have, have three in the one you only have one team you only have one team in the Bucks. Like I don't believe in any other team in that division. I, tell me about the Falcons. I believe in the Bucks. I've seen the Bucks do it. Kirk Cousins has to prove to me. Ooh, Jay Mariotti. Kirk you know, Kirk Cousins has to prove to me that he can do this. Until otherwise noted, it's a one-team division. It's a one-team division. Hmm. So you have it's three possible. teams getting it into the north? It is possible from the north. That, that, so, so which three do I you gotta have? I got to go. Well, it's a, it's, it's a minor miracle that Jordan Love is even playing, right? When you see week one, you're supposed to miss four to six. He missed yeah, three. Sure. Like, he's back early. Now, if the Lions can stay healthy, they're still solid enough to, to do big things right Aiden Hutchinson you, you lost Carlton Davis he got kicked in the side of the head that was kind of crazy too so they're still good enough to contend they're still good good enough to be a playoff team the Vikings the Vikings are a very solid team the Packers are a very solid team the Bears are very surprising I think the Bears are the odd man out because they're young because they don't know how to win it took the Lions a few years to learn how to win. And I don't think they're giving that up. I think they have the taste for it, and I don't think they're going to give it up. Now, if they call the Jets about Mr. Reddick, because Reddick has now been allowed to seek a trade. Apparently, there was a meeting last night in the, the owner's box, and this is the agreement they came to. Okay, Hassan, you can go uh, seek a trade. Especially now that Aiden Hutchinson is out. Why mm. not? Give me a fifth. Give yeah. me a sixth. You can have Hassan Reddick. And he can be sure. ramped up in time for the playoffs. He can be good to go. So, I think the Packers are, are good enough to be in it. I think the Lions are good enough to be in it. I think the Vikings are good enough to be in it. I think that's well within the realm of possibility. And if the only two teams make it, I gotta say the Packers are the odd team out. I, I just... I'm not in love with it. I wasn't in love with it last year, and I'm not in love with it this year. In terms of firepower, in terms of in terms of offensive oomph, the Vikings and the Lions, I feel like they're just better right now. Now, that could absolutely change. That can absolutely change, but right now, if you're forcing me to take two teams, I'm going to take the Lions. I'm going to take the Vikings. But I think that this is a three-team division. It is that deep. It is that strong. Very, very interesting. You can't help but just smile when you see a balloon. Popstarsballoons.com offers spectacular balloon decor for all of life's events specializing in custom balloon creations and installations for private events, corporate and school functions, photo shoots, brand events, and fundraisers. Led by certified balloon artists, the Popstars Balloon Team, shape balloons into custom works of art. Popstar Balloons provides full concept balloon design, build and installation services, as well as pre-assembled decor pieces available for pickup or delivery. Popstar Balloons is a woman-owned, small family business focused on providing professional balloon services using only high-quality, 100% biodegradable natural latex balloons made in the U.S. and Italy. They consistently prioritize the safest use and handling of balloons in a sustainable and responsible manner. Popstar's Balloons is located in Westchester County, New York, but likes to party at events throughout New York City, Connecticut, Long Island, and New Jersey. Popstar's Balloons can also accommodate balloon decor services for destination events. 
No event too big, no event too small, and their custom personalization service is the perfect touch. They also offer a full line of event decor options like backdrop, prop rentals, tablescapes, dessert table setups, custom signs, and they always deliver with a smile. Whether you're looking for gift balloons, classic decor, or large-scale design for a big impact, Popstar Balloons will create the perfect decor for your theme, vibe, and space. So if you have an idea in mind or need inspiration, Popstar Balloons decor will be the cutting edge and spectacular. Visit popstarballoons.com to pop your next event. All right, moving on to basketball. The preseason should be wrapping up soon in the NBA, and Bronny James, well, he's having a hell of a preseason. He's averaging 0.7 points per game, one rebound per game. He has yet to hit a three-pointer, and his field goal percentage is 9.1%. Nine. Where... Where exactly should Coach Reddick fit him into the rotation? Of the G League? The app that is that what we're talking about? We're, oh, we're talking about the actual Lakers. You're talking about the, the, the big club. Where? Why? No. Stop. What part of that stat line indicates that he's ready for this? Nothing. There's absolutely nothing there that says this kid is ready. I mean, how does this? How, how does this work? Like, is LeBron like? Is LeBron watching him play and he's like, "Yeah, this is this is good." Yeah, you know, like, or is he looking at it and like, "Hmm, maybe this wasn't a good idea." Like, how is this being viewed and how does the kid feel? How does Brody feel? Right. I mean, it's got to. You got to feel like shit. If you're not contributing the way everybody else is contributing, right? Like, how are you expect? Like, are, and also, like, are you nervous? Or do you have anxiety about the next steps of your career, wherever they may be? I mean, are you just going to be going to the G League and kind of be in the circus attraction? Because every city you go to, you're LeBron James's son, and people are going to go to those games, and maybe LeBron James shows up. Is that? what you're thinking like is that how you're viewed or are you like just i don't care are you do you have an i don't care like i'm here because my dad got me here and i don't give a shit like i would just wonder like what's the mindset here i don't know as an athlete you want to think that you're contributing to the team somehow and maybe that's defensively because there's no offensive stat that backs up that that you're even remotely ready not, not a one. Not a one. So, if you're just going to be one of those max effort glue guys, there's always room for a guy like that. There's always room on a team for a guy that hustles. There's always room on a team for a defensive stopper. Is that, the, is that him? Because you're certainly not paying him to be that. Right? Right? Oh, right, you paid right. him way over slot. You paid him, and you paid him first round money, and that's what you're getting. Like, no, that that's not the case. Like, you you don't you know who overpays glue guys losing teams. Losing teams overpay glue guys because they're going to trade them. That's what you're trying to do. It's like Dante Divincenzo. Like that that's the the ultimate example of a glue guy. They used him. They baited the hook, they got Carl Anthony Towns for him. DiVincenzo tries hard, shoots well. That's not that's, that's not even close. Dude, if he can aspire to be that, you don't have to aspire to be your dad. Nobody's your dad. Nobody's your dad. Nobody. You need to find your identity. Who are you? Who are you, Bronny James? Do you even know? Because you lit it up in high school. Okay. 
you weren't good in college, and now you're not good in the pro preseason, where they're not even playing their best guys. They're still trying to round out rosters, trying to figure out who the hell they have. Right. So, the best move for this kid would for him to be in the G League. Go down there, mm. find your identity, play your ass off, earn the respect of your teammates, earn the respect of the fans, earn the respect of the league, and then when they need you, they can call you. That would be the that would be the way to go. Now, you and I are both on record saying that the what he should have done was take his name out of the draft. Like we're on record saying that he should have backed out of the draft. And, you know, made Absolutely. himself more enticing after another year at USC. Become the best player That's on it. your team. It's a small order for a person who wants to play Agreed. in the NBA. Agreed. So now you're going to learn on the job. We'll see what you got. But there is no soft landing spot here. You're going you're gonna to get it. You're going to get it from fans. You're going to get it from players. That's just the way it is. Right. Uh, Then sticking with basketball, the New York Liberty and Minnesota Lynx are tied at one game apiece. But honestly, Z, the Liberty should be up two games to zero. Brianna Stewart, arguably the best player in the WNBA, missed two free throws in regulation that would have put the Liberty ahead in the closing seconds of game one. And she missed a layup as time expired in regulation that would have tied the link that, that would have tied the links and sent the game into a second overtime. So why is she not receiving more scrutiny for her terrible play? Well, it's two it's twofold. Because the links played so well. I mean you had three players, you had Nafisa Collier, you had McBride, you had, you had Williams. All scoring over 20 points. A nice balanced attack there. And they, they're coming to play. They're absolutely coming to mm-hmm. take out and get in the kitchen of the Liberty. And it's working. Right? They were able to kind of get inside Brianna Stewart and kind of rattle the cage a little bit. To the point where Brianna Stewart is a fantastic player. You're missing free throws. You're blowing simple layups. Like, it's it's in your head. Expectations are in your head. Pressure's in your head. And the other team, their play is in your head. Now, credit to the Liberty. They came out and won game two. They're going to play game three tonight. So, the reason why she's not getting that is because the Lynx played well. And it's 1-1. If this was 2-0, if they were down 2-0 on the brink of elimination... Brianna Stewart would be getting dragged right now. But because they were able to recover, she's going to get less of the slings and arrows. But it's up to her. It's up to it's up to UNESCO. It's up, they're going to have to to bring it cuz the the pressure of never having won a WNBA title, you figure that's very real. That, that is absolutely very real. And uh, Jemai Jones is the other one. The, the other player. Like, that's your big three. Your big three better come to play. That's it, and that's all. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm actually really surprised at how many layups are missed in a WNBA game. I don't know if there's a lot of contact under the basket or what, but her layup was definitely not an easy one, but it was a, it was a layup that I would expect a, a player of her caliber to make. It was almost like the Patrick Ewing missed layup back in the playoffs, you know, what's it, 20, 30 mm-hmm. years ago. Um, yeah, I guess. I mean, I just, I just think that this is kind of the problem is that there's not, there's not enough attention on the, the ebbs and flows of a WNBA season. Um, you know, I think if LeBron misses the shot and plays the way that she played, LeBron gets crushed regardless of how well, you know, the Warriors played or regardless how well the Pacers played. He's just because he's LeBron James. Like, there's a certain level of expectation we all have. It's almost like as good of a player as Brianna Stewart is, our level of expectation are not as high as it should be for a player of her caliber. 
And I just think, uh, you know, as a, I listen, I'm a Brianna Stewart fan. I actually was trying really hard to go to a game this year because I wanted to see her play. I wanted to see her live and in person. And it's just interesting how, you know, it, it's like you said, it's that, it's that mindset. It's like, oh, they'll play better tomorrow. And, uh, you know, the other players around her are going to rally and, and they'll get it. And she did. To her credit, I will give her credit. The game two she had was absolutely phenomenal. I think she had like a record in steals. Uh, she 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 played lights out. But I mean, this, you're talking about getting Liberty's first championship in their history. You're also talking about having a 2-0 series lead, or at least starting it off with a 1-0 series lead, right? And then you would have gotten presumably the second game anyway. So, yeah, it's just, like, it's interesting the level of expectations we have for, you know, the stars in the, in the NBA and the stars in the WNBA. It's true. But if you look at the game one stats, right, Brianna Stewart had a brutal night shooting. But so did Sabrina Ionescu. So did John Quell Jones. So did Fiebich. Like, they, it's in terms of two-pointers, in terms of field goals, Brutal. 6 of 21, 9 of 14, 8 of 26 from Sabrina Ionescu. That that is horrible. That's horrible. But is it a combination of them just missing shots or are the Lynx forcing them to miss shots? Because the Lynx are a formidable formidable opponent. Like we we do need to give some credit where credit is due. They did vanquish the Sun the same way that the Liberty vanquished the Aces. Now, it was something that I was concerned about when the the Liberty clinched. Is that kind of like, is that going to result in a little bit of a hangover because this was the dragon, right? You needed to slay the dragon of the aces. And is there a fall off? Now, there appeared to be a little bit of a hangover, but you got it out of your system. You move on to the next one. It's kind of like the, it's kind of like the Mets and the Dodgers, right? The you had this emotional series. You vanquished your hated division rivals in the Phillies. And then you get wrecked by the Dodgers. Yeah. You get your shit wrecked. Credit to them. They took the beating. They moved on. They compartmentalized. And they won. That's the sign of a, of a good professional sports team. They don't let things snowball. Now... This, is, this feels like the team of destiny because it's never happened. Never. The Liberty have never won a WNBA title. They're one of the original franchises. They've never won. So if not now, when? That's the thing. You know, that's the story. You vanquished the aces. You vanquished the back-to-back champions. This is supposed to be your time. This is supposed to be your coronation. And now you have a team in the links that, you know, it's not going to be easy. They're not gonna. They're not just gonna, you know, step o- step aside and let you take the crown. You're gonna have to fight for the crown. You're in a series. You're gonna have to figure that out. And if they don't win, if somehow the Lynx topple the Liberty, who were the best team in the WNBA all year, then you're gonna see the criticism. Then you're gonna see the scrutiny that you're expecting, because. The expectations are there, man. The expectations are absolutely there. And with expectations come consequences if you don't fulfill those expectations. Credit to the Liberty. They're putting up a fight. We'll see what happens tonight. We'll see what happens in the entirety of the series. I still think the Liberty will win. They're primed and ready. But if they don't, if they don't, that scrutiny, it's waiting for you. Need some last minute fantasy football advice? Then the boys at the Fade Route have you covered. Check out Red Light, Green Light, 1, 2, 3 with DNZ every NFL Sunday, noon Eastern during the regular season. D and I give you our top 1, 2, 3 fantasy starts or green lights and our top 1, 2, 3 fantasy sits or red lights. That's red light, green light, 1, 2, 3 with D and Z every NFL Sunday, noon Eastern during the regular season. That's red light, green light, 1, 2, 3 with D and Z. 
time for the mail route on the fade route. And if you want to be featured, hit us up fade route mail at gmail.com or slide in our DMs on IG at fade route podcast or drop us a line on X at fade route DNZ. All right, boys and girls, we have a full mailbox for you today. And if you want to send us a a message, hit us up at faderoutmail at gmail.com or slide in our DMs on IG at Faderout Podcast or drop us a line on X at Faderout DNZ. And your email can be featured on the mail route. Email number one comes from Charlie in Old Tapan, New Jersey. Hey guys, did the Jets look better to you under uh, interim head coach Jeff Ulbrich? Ha. Huh. Define yeah. better. Uh, <laughs> define, yeah. Uh, no, they still look like the paper planes to me. Um, they're still undisciplined. 11 penalties. Uh, still unable to stop anybody. 150 yards by a rookie running back. And we still have a veteran quarterback who's unable to close and we're expecting him to close. We're expecting him to be a leader and he's just not doing it. So same old jets. They haven't changed the name on the building or they haven't changed the uniform. So that's it. 11 penalties for 110 yards. Can't win. No, can't win. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. That's horrible. That's absolutely horrible. There's a lack of accountability. There's a lack of discipline. There's a lack of talent. There is a lack <laughs> of ownership. <laughs> there's a lack of competency. Like, take your pick. Take your friggin' pick. Keep going. Like, all they did was move out the bald guy and put in a guy with a beard. Like, it doesn't really matter. It, it doesn't matter. They're, you're rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic at this point. And now you bring in Devontae Adams. <laughs> And what's going to happen when he doesn't get what he wants? Good fucking luck. (laughs) How's that going to work out? Good fucking luck. That's all we need to say. But no, like the defense certainly didn't look good. The the defense didn't look that great. No, they didn't. They let Josh Allen fucking run all over the place. Like, no, I I don't want to hear that shit. And then, you know, DJ Reed didn't have a great game. Sauce. My sauce was fine, I guess. But we're hanging our hat on fine, I guess. Like, that's a problem. <laughs> Still no pass rush. Like, no, where's the identity? The identity's gone. There is no identity on this team. Defensively, it's eh. <laughs> Offensively, it's trash. Special teams, like... <sighs> there is no special teams. There is no special teams. Oh, they're all special. They're all special <laughs> I, oh wait, oh wait, what's that sound? I think I heard another clank. I think he doinked another one. Like, come on. Mm. But between the Jets and the Giants, neither one of them has a kicker. Four, co- Listen, four combined missed field goals. I, like, come on, man. I will say, I think the kicking di- conditions were difficult. I will give him that. I do I do think it was difficult. <laughs> it wasn't easy. But, but he was missing before last no. week. He, he, was missing, he was missing before last night. He's, he's been missing this year. This is true. So, this is true. So, like, you know, you're a guy. Yeah, so my question to you, Charlie, define better. <laughs> define yeah. better. There are levels to this. Did they embarrass themselves on a national stage? A little bit. I think they have another primetime game. Fuck. Oh, yeah, the Sunday Thanks night game. They're the Sunday night game against the Steelers. That's right. They, they Jesus are, Christ. They? Come on now. I'm starting Oof. to get Jets fatigue here. Like, this is ridiculous. Oh yeah, they do not belong in no. prime time. It was but neither messy. did the Giants. Let's, to be fair, neither did the Bengals. They got to put somebody on prime time. Hey, they got to put somebody. Did you see they flexed um, Commanders Bears to four twenty five prime time on Sunday, a week eight? Really? Yeah, that's for cool. Daniels and Caleb Williams. So that's cool. I mean, I'm down. That's for that. fine. Can we can we start flexing the Jets out? Can we just start flexing them? Yeah. Like, can we put them on Thursday every day, every week? Just get them over with and move on. Yeah, 
Actually, that's a great idea. I like that. Just let the Jets play on Thursday. Just let them do that and then just get it let over. The, let, let people like just be miserable with with that on Thursday and it won't ruin the rest of their right, Sunday. Exactly. It's just let them do that. That that sounds like a that sounds like a great idea. No. Email number two. From Darnell in Ocean City, Maryland. Is mm. Derrick okay. Henry the most valuable player in the NFL this season? You know, the odds certainly say you should bet on him. Um, I think he's like plus 6,000 right Damn. now. Damn. Uh, you know, the whole thing is, is like, it's such a quarterback award lately, but I think there could be an argument made that the, the Baltimore the Baltimore Ravens offense would look tremendously different without him, right? Yeah. So I think it's safe to say that if he wasn't there, the Ravens would not, I don't think they'd have the record they have. And, you know, I think you can make that argument about a lot of teams, like if they lost a player here and a player there. But I think he really changes the game. I mean, they are... They are a problem when they're running the football. So I'm going to say, yeah, I think he is the most valuable player. I'm going to go throw some money on that. (laughs) I don't blame you. I I mean, it makes all the sense in the world to do that. Because he has eight rushing touchdowns already on the season. Yeah, he's he's averaging 5.9 yards carry. However, he is dynamic in that offense he is a game he's changer a big dude. It's what they do he's a big guy he he's a big he's dude. wrecking people he's exactly what they needed because what's the alternative justice hill he's not a starter he's a fine running back but he's not a starter you're gonna you were gonna what bring back dobbins dobbins is doing fine with the chargers He's doing, He's doing okay. okay. Yeah, he he had a twenty five carries yeah. last week, which was a lot. But for him. is that gonna, you know, is that gonna translate? I don't know. I don't. I don't know if that still works. Is Lamar Jackson gonna end up being your leading rusher again without Derrick Henry? Chances are yes. Chances are yes. Now that you know they have Lamar Jackson, Lamar Jackson's having it another solid year. But. When you take into account the definition of valuable, Derrick Henry takes this team to the next level. We've seen what it's been without him in years previous. It's it's okay. Sometimes it's really nice, really explosive. And other times it is Ajita-inducing. So, in Derrick Henry, in the king we trust, he's a big load, and you're not going to move that big load. You're not moving him. This isn't the tail end of his time in Tennessee. He's hungry. And Derrick Henry, if any skill position player has a shot, he's got the best one. Because he can affect the game so drastically. So, yeah, I'm with you. If you're if you're gonna do a if you're gonna place a little wager, gamble responsibly. But also, I would I, I'd throw some of that on. I would absolutely throw okay. some of that on the king. Your favorite podcast has its own merch line now. Go to the Fade Store with DNZ.com today and check out our releases in apparel, accessories, drinkware, and more. Ever wanted an alleged superstar t-shirt? We got those. You want some yoga pants? We got those too. And we're not done yet. We have a lot of exciting collaborations and new products on the way. But check out what we have now at the Fade Store with DNZ.com. That's the Fade Store with DNZ. Who's the best of the worst this week in sports? 
The Fade Store presents the Alleged Superstar of the Week Award. Alright boys and girls, you know what time it is. It's time for the Alleged Superstar of the Week. You know how it goes. We put up a poll on our X account at FadeRouteDNZ and our Instagram poll at FadeRoutePodcast and you vote. And you vote, and you vote, and you vote. And the winner of said vote gets a shout-out on this here show and takes home the coveted-ass trophy. Do you know how, who took home the coveted-ass trophy last week, D? They don't. The Jets. J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. Oh. For that shit show of handling <laughs> the Robert Sala fire. Just absolutely terrible. Terrible, horrible, no good, very bad, but completely on brand for the Jets. But that was last week. This is this week. Who are your nominees for Legend Superstar of the Week? D. All right, so first up, I've got Bronny James. He's not even averaging a triple single. Oof. Does 0.7 points per game, one rebound per game, 9.1% field goal percentage, 0% from three. I do not think it was a good idea to go pro. Ronnie James, you are my alleged superstar of the week. Number two, Dallas Cowboys. Only nine points against the Lions in Dallas on Jerry's birthday. Oh, no. Happy birthday, Jerry. Lions were, let, were trying to throw touchdown passes to Lyman. They were running hook and laterals. Yikes. Dallas Cowboys, you are my alleged superstar of the week. And number two, Brianna Stewart. Missing two free throws at the end of game one. And this made the game go into overtime. And missing a layup to tie the game in overtime ultimately cost the Liberty game one. Brianna Stewart, you are my alleged superstar of the week. What do you got, Z? I mean, you can't go wrong with any of those options there. I am going to start... With Ohio State. In particular, quarterback Will Howard. Hmm. Okay. You're playing Oregon. Oregon int- intentionally takes a 12 man on the field penalty. They oh, trade right. that penalty, five yard penalty, for four seconds off the clock. Mr. Howard decides to scramble and then slides. Slight problem. Clock is running. Time runs out. We call that pulling a Dak Prescott. So, that is an abysmal thought process. What are you thinking in that moment? You gotta get the fuck out of bounds. You gotta figure out a way to get the fuck out of bounds and keep some time on the clock. Will Howard and Ohio State, you are my alleged superstar of the week. Number two, the NFL approving Tom Brady's stake in the Raiders today. He now Hmm. owns 5% of the team, but that makes his life way more difficult because now he has to deal with all of those sanctions regarding his media coverage. He's not doing that great to begin with in the booth. He's very blah in the booth. Now, you've made it even worse, because guess what? He can't even prepare properly. This is him prepared, and he's vanilla. Imagine what he's going to be like when he's not able to prepare. NFL, you are my alleged superstar of the week. And then last but not least, the Jets. It feels like we're just piling on at this point. It really it really does. It feels like we're just piling on with these suckers. 11 penalties, 110 yards. This was supposed to be like your big party, right? It's supposed to be the big coming out party. You're supposed to rewrite the ship and you're going to take over first place. And, you know, same old Jets. Same, same old Jets. Two doinks from Zerline. One pick from Rodgers undisciplined play and you almost got Garrett Wilson killed so naturally we're just a wide receiver away 
Let's just bring me Devontae Adams. All good. We're cool. It's it's all good. Ready to go. Oh my god. Oh my god. New York <laughs> Jets, you are my alleged superstar of the week. I think we said our piece. Go to our X account at FaderoutDNZ. Go to our Instagram poll at FaderoutPodcast Podcast and vote. And vote and vote and vote. And for our nominee. You're better than that. Just do better. Just do better. This has been the Fade Route with DNZ. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Catch our podcast on Wednesday nights on Spotify, iTunes, iHeartRadio, or wherever you listen to your podcast. So until next time, stay fade, everyone. Time for us to run the go route. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks for listening to this episode of our podcast. If you liked what you heard and you want to hear more, be sure to like and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Leave us a review, rate us five stars, turn on subscription notifications, and share on social media. Tell your friends and spread the word.